Good afternoon. I'm Professor John Jackson, Chairman of the College's 9-11 Memorial Committee, and it's my pleasure to serve as Master of Ceremonies for today's event. We extend a special welcome to the Chief of Naval Operations, Distinguished Fellows, Admiral Gallero Barrera, former Commander of the Colombian Navy, Admiral Nirmal Verma, former Chief of the Naval Staff of the Indian Navy, and Rear Admiral Lars Sanez, former Chief of the Royal Norwegian Navy. Thank you for the honor of your presence. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem by the Newport Navy Choristers and remain standing for the invocation. Oh, say can you see our delight, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Blessed with victory and peace, may the heavens rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. And Captain will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Prince of Peace, we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to you knowing that you hear every prayer spoken and silent. You instructed the Israelites to collect 12 stones to make a memorial so that they would never forget. Today, we vow to never forget how you delivered us through 9-11, how one day like December 7th or 9-11 can change the world. We remember the innocent who lost their lives, the innocent who live with trauma, the police, the firefighters, the EMTs, the doctors, the nurses, the clergy, the service members who responded, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, the leaders, the cities, nation, and our world that was affected. May you be honored by all, and may we be humbled in all that is said and here today. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Please be seated. Today marks the 21st anniversary of the cowardly attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and the aborted attack that ended in a grassy field in Pennsylvania. Thanks. Much has happened to the world since this fateful day, and it's highly appropriate that we pay our respects to these patriots and to others who have perished in this long fight. We should note that just over four weeks ago, a drone strike on an apartment in Kabul, Afghanistan, killed Ayman al-Zawari, who along with Osama bin Laden planned the attacks on 9-11. After two decades, justice was finally rendered to one of the senior planners who caused so much suffering in the U.S. and around the globe. As we commemorate the 9-11 attacks, we're particularly pleased to have the battalion of midshipmen candidates from the Naval Academy Preparatory School with us 
the vast majority of which were not born on 9-11-2001, as well as faculty and students from the Navy Supply Corps School. Thank you very much. Looking back on September 12, 2001, we first learned that one of the Naval War College's fleet seminar students had died in the terrorist attack on the Pentagon. A committee was formed that day to commemorate this sacrifice. In the days and weeks that followed, we learned of other students and of college alumni who perished in this tragic event. As word of these losses circulated within the Naval War College family, donations of money, material, and services quickly began to be received by the Naval War College Foundation. A number of those donors are with us this afternoon, including the widow of Frank Hansen, whose company did much of the construction. Nice to see you, Jenny. The memorial you see before you, which was dedicated in September 2002, is the end result of their generosity. The focal point of this memorial is a broken fragment of limestone from the west facade of the Pentagon, which was carefully conveyed to Newport by a team of Navy Seabees. This stone, though damaged, is standing upright, signifying the restored and strengthened Pentagon building and the continued strength of the United States Armed Forces. The final tally from the attack showed that three students who were actively enrolled in the fleet seminar program and eight Naval War College alumni had been killed while on the job serving their country. Their names are inscribed on a bronze plaque and their memories, along with the others who were killed that day, are enshrined in the hearts of all Americans. I now invite Captain Mike Rack, the college's vice president and chief of staff, to offer his thoughts on this solemn occasion. Thank you everyone for coming to this September 11th commemoration. I'd like to start by recognizing the DeCanto family who come to the U.S. Naval War College every year in memory of Navy Captain Gerald DeCanto, who graduated in 1998 and was in the Pentagon during the attacks. I would also like to recognize the Naval War College Foundation who graciously provided the ceremonial wreath today. CNO Distinguished Fellows and Naval War College Community, the Navy Supply Corps School, the Navy Choristers, thank you for your singing, Naval Academy Preparatory School, families and friends. Captain DeCanto has been in my mind a great deal as I was preparing for today's event. During one of my tours before I came to the U.S. Naval War College, I was in charge of assessing ship driving in the simulator over at the surface warfare school down the street. Every day, multiple times a day, I would walk by the September 11th memorials and the, the Captain DeCanto picture, as well as those of the other surface warfare officers who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. It always caught my attention. I remember particularly being drawn to the display honoring Captain DeCanto because like me, he had the privilege of commanding a US Navy warship. And we both sailed together in frigates. I frequently think about how all of us must continue to try and measure up to the example of Captain DeCanto and so many great pet patriots have set for us to follow. As Professor Jackson described, the attack on September 11, 2001 was devastating and killed nearly 3,000 people from 93 different countries. This afternoon, as we gather, any of us old enough to remember that day can recall exactly where we were and what we did when the attacks occurred. I was a navigator on USS Elrod, the frigate Elrod, FFG 55, when the attack first happened. As a young lieutenant, I remember my first thoughts on seeing the news that day was that everything had changed. For those too young to remember, it's hard to overstate the emotional impact the attacks had on the entire nation and the sense of uncertainty of what would come next for those of us in uniform. 
Yet I now have sailors and junior officers here today with an, only an academic knowledge of those events. An entire generation has been born since the attacks. The younger generation has no images of first responders, bystanders, and victims forever in their memory. Memories of the disbelief, the walking wounded, buildings collapsing, and glass and concrete particles in the air. Our job now, as, as then, is never to forget the attacks that took the lives of so many parents, children, and siblings. And the way to never forget is to continue and pause to remember just as we are doing today. But I especially want the post 9-11 generation here today to understand how heroic people were during the attack and in the minutes, hours, and days that followed. Passengers on flight 93 fought back and crashed into an empty field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, just outside the target of Washington, DC, giving their lives to prevent further devastation. Service members, first responders, and citizens came together and showed the courage to take action, to move towards danger instead of away. Anyone with at least basic medical training stepped in to assist and others assisted with logistics and supported however they could. I've heard people say that on that day, people performed above their expectations, but I don't buy that because I know what Americans are capable, capable of when called to action. Following the attacks, the hospital ship USNS Comfort sailed to New York City to serve the first responders and volunteers at Ground Zero, providing a safe place to rest, to get counseling or medical treatment, or even just a hot coffee and a meal. At the Pentagon, a team from the Navy Yard Medical Clinic, as well as civilian nurses, practitioners, and others stopped everything to assist in setting up a field hospital under an overpass to run triage treatment and transport with only limited supplies available. And I, like probably some here, deployed immediately in the aftermath, a mere eight days later on September 19th. To ensure our nation always remembers those lives lost, we must tell their stories to ensure the sacrifices made on that day and since that day are honored. We must remember those who paid the ultimate price that day soldiers, sailors, airmen, guardsmen, Marines, DOD civilians, interagency, international partners, friends, and civilians. So many civilians. So many displayed courageous acts of heroism and proved the true resilience and fortitude of the American people. Our brothers and sisters lost that day live on in our hearts. We remain saddened by their loss, but we'll be forever grateful for the example their fighting spirit left behind. It has been over two decades since the attacks, but I know many still feel the pain of loss. There are some wounds that never fully heal. The Navy ships USS New York, USS Arlington, and USS Somerset honor those who lost their lives on September 11th and the honor, courage, and commitment demonstrated then and since. Here at the Naval War College, we lost 11 colleagues and friends. The Naval Academy Preparatory School lost four colleagues and friends. Nearly 3,000 people have family members still grieving and healing since that day. And thousands of survivors suffered and continue to suffer physical, and mental wounds. The attacks on 9-11 were directed not just at the American people, but by targeting the iconic World Trade Center and the Pentagon, the terrorists were symbolically striking at the heart of our nation's guiding ideals. At the U.S. Naval War College, we have kept 9-11 and its aftermath at the forefront of our education as we tirelessly push to acquire the mental strength and flexibility to outthink our competitors 
and ensure we are equal to the challenges that await us. We will never forget that date, September 11th, 2001. We will never forget the debt we owe our fellow War College comrades and all who gave their lives for freedom. Our compassion for their families will never fade. Our courage to carry on must never waver. So on this day of remembrance, we remember the lost, their families, and our great nation. Thank you. I'd now like to tell just a little bit about each of the patriots that we salute today. Captain Gerald F. DeCanto was a 1998 graduate of the College of Naval Warfare. Following his commissioning from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1979, he served in a wide array of engineering and operation assignments on surface combatants, culminating in command of the guided missile frigate USS Simpson. He was serving as director of the current operations and plans branch in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. As Captain Rack noted, we are honored that the DeCanto family is with us today to represent Jerry and accept our collective thanks for his service and sacrifice. Pat, your strong and beautiful family clearly demonstrates the love and reverence that military families feel for those who fall in service to our nation. We remember Captain Gerald F. DeCanto. Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Elseth completed his War College studies through the Fleet Seminar Program here in Newport, Rhode Island in June of 1995. During his studies, he was selected as the Junior Officer of the Year for the Newport Ashore Commands in 1994. A graduate of Ohio State University, he served on surface combatants in engineering and weapons positions for a decade before transferring to the Naval Reserve. He was a reservist serving on active duty in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Nelson. Captain Lawrence D. Getspread completed his Naval War College studies in 1990. He enlisted in the Navy in 1963, completed Aviation Officer Candidate School in 1972, and then served as a Naval Flight Officer in the patrol aviation community. He served in a number of leadership positions, including command of Patrol Squadron 40. He was in the Navy Command Center when it was attacked. We remember Captain Lawrence D. Getzfred. Ms. Angela Marie Houts had just begun her war college studies at the Fleet Seminar site in the Pentagon. She was a civilian employee of the Department of the Navy and had been recently promoted to senior day analyst in the CNO operations intelligence plot, the youngest person ever, military or civilian, to hold that post. She celebrated her 27th birthday on September 6th aboard a Navy frigate during an orientation and perished in the Navy Command Center. We remember Ms. Angela Marie Howes. Lieutenant Commander Patrick Jude Murphy completed his study at the college's fleet seminar site in Great Lakes, Illinois in 1999. Following his commissioning from the NROTC program at the University of Mississippi, he attended the Navy Nuclear Power School, graduating in 1986. He subsequently served aboard both attack and fleet ballistic missile submarines. He was serving a three-week active duty assignment in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Commander Patrick Jude Murphy. <laughs> Lieutenant Jonas Martin Panic was studying national security decision making at the college's fleet seminar site in Annapolis, Maryland. As a student at the Naval Academy, he excelled as a football player and power lifter. After graduating in June of 1997, he completed the Naval Intelligence Officer's basic course. He was assigned as Flag Intelligence Briefer within the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence plot and was on duty in the Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Jonas Martin Panic. <laughs> Captain Jack D. Punches, U.S. Navy, retired, graduated from the College of Naval Command and Staff 
1985. A naval aviator for 27 years, he retired from active duty in 2000 and was serving in a senior civilian position as deputy head of the Navy Interagency Support Branch at the time of the attack. We remember Captain Jack D. Punches. Commander Robert A. Schlegel completed his studies at the Naval War College's Fleet Seminar site in Norfolk, Virginia. As a surface warfare officer, he had service aboard cruisers and destroyers, including a tour as executive officer of the destroyer USS Arthur W. Radford. He was serving as the Deputy Current Operations and Plans branch head at the time of the attack. We remember Commander Robert A. Schlegel. Commander Dan Frederick Schanauer was a fleet seminar student and a naval intelligence officer, having served in a number of assignments both afloat and overseas. In May of 1997, his article, Freedom is Not Free, was published by the U.S. Naval Institute. In it, he recalled the death of four shipmates a decade earlier aboard USS Midway. An excerpt from this article has been incorporated into this memorial. He was serving as officer in charge of the Chief of Naval Operations Intelligence Plot at the time of the attack. We remember Commander Dan Frederick Shanauer. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Chip Taylor graduated from the College of Naval Command and Staff in 1998. The son of a career Army officer, he was a member of the Army Adjutant General Corps with extensive experience in administrative and personnel matters. On September 11, 2001, he was serving as military assistant to the Deputy Chief of Staff for Army Personnel, Lieutenant General Timothy Maud, who was the senior officer to die in the attack. Kip was posthumously promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Kip's wife, Kip's wife Nancy, gave birth to a second son months after the attack, and then she passed away from cancer the following year. Kip's brother is raising the boys. We remember Lieutenant Colonel Kip Taylor. <laughs> Captain John D. M. Nicky, Sr., U.S. Navy, retired, a graduate of the Naval War College class of 1967, was aboard American Airlines Flight 77 when it destroyed the west facade of the Pentagon. At age 71, Captain Yan Nicky was the oldest person to die during the Pentagon attack. A member of the U.S. Naval Academy class of 1952, he served with distinction as a Navy fighter pilot and test pilot, ultimately serving as the director of the Navy Test Pilot School in Maryland. We remember Captain John D. Yam Nicky, Sr. Today, we would also like to honor four Naval Academy prep school alumni who perished that day. Lieutenant Kenneth Waldy graduated from the Naval Academy Prep School in 1974 and from the Naval Academy in 1978. He was class president each of his four years at Annapolis. After serving his active duty obligation, Kenneth left the Navy to continue his education in electrical engineering and then worked for 17 years at Raytheon Corporation. On September 11th, he was a passenger on American Airlines Flight 11 when it crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. We remember Lieutenant Kenneth E. Waldy. <laughs> Captain Robert Dolan graduated from the Naval Academy Preparatory School in 1977 and from the Naval Academy in 1981. His naval service included tours as executive officer of USS Thomas S. Gates and commanding officer of USS John Hancock. He was working on the first floor of the Pentagon as head of the strategy and concepts branch when American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the building. We remember Captain Robert E. Dolan. <laughs> Commander Patrick Dunn graduated from the Naval Academy Preparatory School in 1981 and from the Naval Academy in 1985. He served as assistant damage control officer on USS Theodore Roosevelt and as executive officer on USS LaSalle. He was working in the Pentagon's Navy Command Center at the time of the attack. We remember Captain Patrick Dunn. <laughs> Lieutenant Junior Grade Darren Pontell graduated from the Naval Academy Preparatory School in 1994 and from the Naval Academy in 1998. 
He had deployed aboard USS Dwight D. Eisenhower before reporting to the Pentagon as an intelligence officer collecting and analyzing data in support of the carrier. He was serving in the Pentagon at the time of the attack. We remember Lieutenant Junior Grade Darren H. Montel. The list of fallen heroes includes officers and civilians, men and women, active duty and reserve officers, Navy and Army personnel, junior officers just beginning their careers, and retired officers still serving in civilian jobs. It is a cross-section of our military forces and evidence that patriotic sacrifice is not limited to any one group or category of Americans. At this time, Captain Rack and Mr. Ray DeCanto will be assisted by the Naval War College Color Guard in placing a commemorative wreath in honor of our fallen comrades. Please rise for the placement of the wreath. Chaplain Fashna will now offer the benediction. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, your arm doth bound that restless wave. As we leave this place, may you protect us from stormy ski seas and scary skies. May you protect our brothers and sisters in harm's way. May we encourage one another as today is still called today and remember that love covers a multitude of sins. May you bring peace to war-torn lands, peace to troubled hearts, peace to where understanding does not exist. 
and all your ways. May we honor you. Amen. I'd like to thank the uh, Newport Navy Choristers for their uh, talent and helping to make this a very special event. Uh, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you very much, and thank you for honoring the memory of these great Americans. <laughs>